Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, in the span of just a few hours yesterday, I spoke with three of my constituents who called to ask for my help with a specter of foreclosure. Three of them. And all had the same basic story. Each not only heartbreaking, but also surreal, defying any sort of sense of either decency or of common sense. The minister I spoke with found herself in a financial limbo that has her physically, emotionally, and financially sick. Through coughs and sore throat, she said that she had signed on to a new financing plan to deal with her mortgage. It was a plan she put together with the national bank she had been paying for years. She has been faithfully paying under that plan. And then she started to get threatening letters from the same bank saying that she was delinquent on her payments and not paying enough. The same bank. So she and the others were on two tracks. In fact, it's hard to tell how many tracks they were on with the same bank. Multiple instructions, multiple tracks, multiple excuses, lost documents leading to missed deadlines, constantly shifting ground, foreclosures happening a few days after reassurance that foreclosure was not in process. The bank faces no risk and makes no commitments and gives no break to the homeowner. Colleagues, we should not forget that several of these same banks receive substantial assistance from American taxpayers to stay in business. I'm reminded of the parable of the ungrateful servant in Matthew 18. Look it up. <laughs> One of the citizens I spoke with had a bizarre experience in which a bank employee denied the existence of a signed agreement she had in front of her, signed on behalf of the bank. The bank employee said it didn't matter what document she had. The bank seemed to be playing a good cop, bad cop routine. Now, my apologies to the officers in here in the chamber. In which sometimes bank employees are all solicitous and problem solving. The next thing you know, you're getting a threatening letter or a phone call that offers no way out. To be in default or even in distress these days is to enter the looking glass. The Senate bills presently stalled speak to these issues. Senate bills that to get to this chamber had broad bipartisan support. They ask for simple human decency, decency that sadly seems to require legislation. There are too many families in Oregon experiencing these bizarre scenarios. If we are to make life better for Oregonians, we cannot fail to act on these abuses. A newspaper article quoted a member of this body talking about a breach of trust. Talk about a breach of trust. Some of us in this body came into this session with very clear intentions, and we have not wavered from them to pass a bill to help distressed Oregon homeowners. I'm disappointed that there are some in this building willing to go home without taking action. Thank you.